to druid magic, Avalon produces the best herbal medicines in the world. Herbal medicine is used from everything from healing cuts to birth control! Hooray! We love- Oh shit. Hey there everybody welcome back to my channel it is Martha I am so glad to see you here today we are back with part two of Maid Marion so we started this game last week and I I was very pleasantly surprised with how beautiful it is one and how great the lore is this is super exciting to be playing I already love Marion. She's sassy, she's spunky, she's fun, and I'm already a simp for Little John. Like, I already told y'all, he's my favorite character in any Robin Hood media. Um, but Robin's also kind of fun. I enjoyed the banter that Marion and Robin had. Will is still mysterious at this point, but we shall see what he's like as we continue to play. So, we had just tried to escape by jumping in the river. That failed miserably and John had come to our rescue. Um, he is currently carrying us through the forest and singing us a little song. And we are going to, you know, find out more about our apparently terrible fiance. Um, and they're gonna try and help us escape, which is great. So, let's go. Some time later, I heard shouts and lifted my head to see Robin and Will waiting at the bridge. Great. I gave them both a sour look as we approached. Thank the light, milady! What in blazes were you thinking? She wasn't, obviously. Leave her be, you two. We're almost there now, Lady Marion. Robin shook his head. I see she's cozy with you at least old pal i'd be quite jealous if all wasn't quite so soggy damn it robin <laughs> with that everyone fell in beside each other walking with their mounts i began to feel chilled in the early summer forest but the large man's body heat kept me from shivering too badly it wasn't much longer until we stopped in front of what appeared to be a steep mountainside. What now? Robin stepped in front of the group, gesturing like a showman, because he is God. This is the best part! Much to my dismay, John followed along as Robin walked us directly at the mountain. I made a small noise of protest. Close your eyes. It's easier the first time. Noom. Oh, why not? I squeezed them shut and felt him carry me forward for far longer than he should have been able to. My stomach began to flip with worry when I realized we should have run into a rock face some time ago. Still, he kept walking. I squeezed my eyes shut as tightly as possible and prayed for the shadow's protection. All right, you can open them now. I did! And what I saw in front of me nearly defied description. This is like a little fairy treehouse community. I want to live there. Please. It's, it's so cute. I cry. And we got some sparkly noises going on. Robin grinned as he showed off the absolutely impossible camp we had wandered into. Lady Marion of Glastonbury, welcome to the headquarters of the rebellion against your fiancé. Ah! Sure, a chapter two, my future in my own hands. Maybe I should have just, like, continued till the end of the chapter. I forgot there were chapters in this thing. Let's see if we can finish chapter two in this video. Onward we go. Chapter two, my future in my own hands. First, we drink. It was like nothing I had ever seen before. If I thought that Sherwood was an enchanted place, this valley practically glowed with the magic of the Fae. This was the kind of secret forest glen I had read about in the accounts written by the few humans who had wandered into Fairy and managed to return with their sanity intact. 
the mystical half-world in which the Fae dwell. It is intimately connected with the land of Avalon. See, I feel like Esh would be into this game. Esh! I hope you're watching this. A huge clearing stretched out in front of me, but it was not the kind of cleared land you'd see in a human settlement. Also, Ash probably knows the developer for this. I feel like a lot of the game devs that I play games for on this channel all just, like, intimately know each other. Small community. We love that. Sure, the stony fire pit in front of me wasn't unusual, but beyond the, the landscape... <sighs> beyond that, the landscape was dotted with cottages that had literally been grown from the earth. Every building in this camp was constructed of living trees with nary a sign of tool or use, uh, tool use or other human construction to be found. See this one back here? It reminds me of a hobbit hull, which I desperate, I just, I'm a hobbit. I just, I just want to live in a cute little green place with lots of food and just relax, honestly. This camp had to have been directly created by the Fae. No druid had the power to command plants in such a manner. Who were these people who captured me? I tore my eyes from the sight and opened my mouth to ask a question of Robin when we were interrupted by a loud shout. Light above and shadow below, what did you boys do to this poor lass? A cons- Ah, okay, so light and shadow are- Okay, 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 okay. Concept that embodies half of Avalon religious philosophy associated with the public sphere, law, governess, and human ingenuity. Okay. Oh, oh, it's a lady. So her sprite probably isn't finished yet, but cool. Oh, shit, I'm gonna just bump into my mic again. Oh, no. Major side characters such as Theo and Nell. Okay, so that must be Nell. Alrighty then. A thoroughly ordinary middle-aged woman bustled over to us, looking quite cross. Ah, Nell, meet Lady Marion, who... Yes, yes, time for that later. Come, my lovey, let's get you cleaned up and out of wee Johnny's cloak. Wee Johnny, but he's giant! I love this lady already. She grabbed my hand and I giggled at the reference to wee Johnny. Sheer exhaustion mixed with wonder at this magical place had made me compliant. My new acquaintance chatted at me as she pulled me along through the camp, leaving my speechless abductors behind. Apparently, they knew better than to intervene. I'm Nell, the tailor for this rowdy bunch. Oh, so you're the one who gives them the drip. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, used to have a shop in Nottingham, and I paid my taxes right and all. But then the sheriff's men started asking for even more money. For protection, they said. For them, more like. I held them off until they said they'd burn the shop down. Now I'm here thrown in with this lot. That's awful. I'm Marion. I'm, well, kidnapped, I guess. Nell let out a hearty laugh. We'd left the main camp and were walking on a flower-lined dirt path toward what sounded like a waterfall. You'll be all right, my lovey. We'll get you cleaned up and then the boys can tell you what they're all about. You'll be needing some new clothes, methinks. I hope you don't mind tunic and trousers. I have some small ones I can take in right quick. Oh, thank you. That's just fine. In truth, I had always wondered what it would be like to dress like a man, so I was delighted by Nell's lack of deference to my nobility. Maybe for the next couple rounds of this game, I should- I'll keep the short wig, but then I'll- I'll be a bit more- a bit more manly, maybe. We'll see. Perhaps she hadn't heard Robin's aborted introduction and didn't even know my status. I decided not to enlighten her. As we walked along, the crashing sound of the waterfall became louder. Nell stopped in front of a cleverly designed sign with male and female symbols painted onto it. A wooden arrow perched on top of the sign, and she moved it over to the female symbol. I mean, fuck gender, but like, I don't know how gender works in this universe, so I guess they're just gonna go with the binary. We moved on, and the forest cleared to reveal a gorgeous waterfall basin. Nell smiled to see my obvious pleasure at the scene. I love a bath! She loves a bath. We like Marion. Then tugged me along to the water's edge until we reached a warm, steamy cave off to the side of the falls. Yes. <laughs> ah! Oh my god! Bro, this is magic! We got, like, stars on top of the cave. We have some glowing plants, a bunch of towels, and, like, a little... <sighs> 
Man, she just took Mary into the spa. I want to go to the spa, but it is spiking again, so I am not going to go to the spa, but at home spa day sounds great. The walls were lined with glowing fairy worms. Oh. I don't like that. <laughs> And I caught a whiff of rotten eggs in the air. We passed into a large cavern, and the steamy pools I saw there made me exclaim in delight. Hot springs! I'd never seen hot springs before. They were a bit smelly, but their warmth beckoned to my shivering, weary body. If I ever saw a lass who needed a hot spring, it's you. Will you stay put for old Nell for a while? Gladly. I was done running. I didn't know if it was possible to find a way out of this magical valley on my own, and my energy was thoroughly spent. Besides, I was now far too curious about this fey-touched place to want to leave it just yet. Nell pulled a tape from her apron pockets and did some quick measurements. She then left and I stripped and soaked away my stressful day. A pile of towels had been helpfully left by the springs, along with a veritable banquet of herbal medicines and poultices. Thanks to druid magic, Avalon produces the best herbal medicines in the world. Herbal medicine is used for everything from healing cuts to birth control! Hooray! We love- Oh shit, I am so sorry. This series is just gonna be me hitting my mic. Um, I love that birth control exists in this realm. Thank you, game devs. Little little details like that. I love that. Woo! Here we go. I had somehow managed to escape injury on the rough journey here, but this was yet another sign that these rebels were uncommonly civilized. Sometime later, Nell returned to find me stretched out asleep on a towel, luxuriantly naked in the warm cavern. Why is naked highlighted here? I think we know what it means, but let's click on it. Avalons do not have a strong culture of bodily shame, and nudity during same-sex bathing or within families is not unusual. Yeah, but that seems normal. Good. I felt considerably better, considerably better after a soak and rest. One set of clean dry clothes, a pair of boots that nearly fit, and some determined hair detangling later, and I was ready to face my captors, or rescuers if I was to believe them. Okay! That's hot. <laughs> that is... Ooh! We love the drip. I love... Are these laces or is this embroidery here on the pants? We love an off-the-shoulder. We got a little... We got a little peasant shirt going on. Leather gloves. A mm. Yeah. Yeah, boy. We are into it. Super into it. I love that. I'm gonna save here just so I can look at this outfit again. Shit. God, why do I want to cosplay this so bad? That's so good. I stretched curiously, feeling the trousers move against my legs. If nothing else, this attire was a new kind of adventure for me. Look at her. So good. Once I was fully changed and ready, Nell showed me how to, uh, to my guest cabin, where a somewhat subdued Robin was waiting for me. I sat down from him on a surprisingly sturdy mushroom stool. Where's the mushroom? Robin's eyes widened when he took in my attire. Milady, Oh, I'm so sorry. We can find you something more fitting. No, please. This is quite comfortable. Never mind that. This is... What is all this? I gestured to the furniture and the fey-grown cabin in general. It's a bit of a tale, but I'd like you to hear it. Peace? He held out his hand and then pulled it sa back slightly in mock concern. If you'd keep your teeth to yourself this time. I wanted to give him an earful about the way he treated me thus far. And yet, his unexpected sincerity, along with his natural charm, lowered my defenses. Uh, I suppose there was no real harm in hearing him out. As long as you behave. I gave him an uneasy smile, which he returned readily, looking relieved. Then he sat back and began his tale. I hope you'll excuse me. I'll have to be serious for a moment. 
It's not my forte. I nodded. Two years ago, John and I returned from the war to find that Nottingham was a right mess. The war! Let's get some background. Seven years ago, Nibiru invaded Avalon via the narrow land bridge that connects their continents. It was a nasty stalemate until two years ago when the Nibirians themselves overthrew their monarch and sued Avalon for peace. Man, I just, I just would love a, a book of lore for this. My father was killed by the Nibirians, so I was the new lord of Luxley Holding, northeast of Nottingham. I'm so sorry. He bowed his head briefly in acknowledgement of my sympathy. So yes. You know about Prince John and his taxes, and I know we have debts to pay. But here in Nottingham and the Holdings nearby, it hasn't been fair at all. Prince John, currently Prince Regent of Avalon, ruling in his missing brother's stead. He, great he has greatly raised taxes in order to pay off Avalon's war debt to Sunjata. Oops. Shit. I'm afraid my fellow nobles have been pushing all the burden onto the crafters and merchants, even onto farmers and other serfs. They're hurting whilst we feast in our manners. Despicable. Indeed! And so a year ago, there was a rebellion planned in Nottingham. The old Lord Nottingham was awful, a vain, greedy tyrant. I know, I should have just looked to my own holding, but that was never my family's way. Tell us about your family, Robin. The family that rules Loxley Holding has long been considered eccentric, uh, with close ties to the emerging middle class of crafters in their holding. Lord Dunstan of Loxley married a woman from an equally eccentric family, and the two raised Robin with rather liberal values for the time. Good show. I helped fund the rebellion, gave them places to meet, decided I'd help them fight, though I didn't want to take Nottingham for myself. It might have worked, too, but someone betrayed them. Betrayed me, too. The rebels were gathered in Sherwood, and I was about to join them to march on Nottingham. Before I could, Lord Geoffrey of Woodthorpe showed up at my door with an arrest warrant for sedition. It was signed by Prince John himself. Lord Geoffrey, the man I was supposed to marry. Things were starting to come together now. I learned later that Lord Nottingham and his guard had ambushed the rebellion on the edge of Sherwood Forest. His face twisted into a look of grief and regret. It was a bloodbath. If only I'd been there, maybe I could have... He shook his head. But I wasn't there. The only good thing to come of it was that Nottingham and his son were killed, leaving no heirs. Prince John and his personal army rode into Nottingham as fast as they could, declared martial law, destroyed the guilds, even those that had refused to take part in the rebellion. Then he installed Geoffrey of Woodthorpe as the provisional lord of Nottingham. Folk called Geoffrey the sheriff, since he seems more lawman than lord. As for me, my dear cousins John and Will sought to free me from prison. They met an ex-druid called Duck. Friar Duck! I love that Duck is a druid here. Bro, okay. Maybe I lied. Like, Little John is my favorite character, like, main character in all of Robin Hood series, but I have such a soft spot for Friar Tuck, and that's probably due to the Disney version. Like, get out of my church! That's the best shit ever. We love Tuck. So, so glad he is here. I want to meet Tuck. Uh, they met an ex-druid called Tuck, who helped them break me out on the condition that we assist him with some sort of mysterious quest he's on. He claims to be working on behalf of the Rose King and the Wolf Queen. The Fey Lords of Sherwood? That's impossible! Fey Lords. Particularly powerful Greater Fey serve as something close to the leaders of the Fey in the area. Humans give them royal titles that seem befitting to their situation. Uh, station, excuse me. The Fey Lords of Sherwood are a wilding, wildling, wildling called the Wolf Queen, a wildling called the Wolf Queen, and a greenling called the Rose King. Bro, this just gets deeper and deeper. There is so much shit. Oh my god. It's impossible! Ever, uh, ever since the signing of the Pact, the Fey had never recruited humans to do their bidding. The Pact, an agreement uh, that was made between Avalon's humans and Fey during King Arthur's reign. Okay, so we 
Bro, Robin Hood and Arthurian lore all in one place. <laughs> to this day, it governs the exchange of life force and magical power between Fey and Druids. It also governs Avalon's land use, resource extraction, and even the fertility of Avalon's people. That's nuts. And yet, you believe your eyes, do you not? He gestured around at the impossible cabin in the impossible camp. It was true. I had no better explanation. I'd like to speak with this Tuck. That's because you haven't met him yet. <laughs> I cannot wait to meet- I hope he's a crazy old man. I really do. That's my favorite type of Tuck. Anyhow, this camp was prepared for us. Tuck uses his considerable powers to assist our cause, and in return, we shelter him, feed him, and don't ask too many questions. We have our own problems. Things didn't get better in Nottingham after the sheriff took over. They got worse. Geoffrey's guard is thoroughly corrupt. I'm sure Nell told you her story? I nodded. Hold on. Geoffrey's guard. Lesser Avalon noblemen are called knights. They own small pieces of property but do not govern holdings. The least wealthy and powerful knights often work in their lord's guard. Lords call up their holdings knights in times of conflict or war, as few commoners possess martial skills. Okay. I nodded. She's not alone. A good half of the folk here are crafters of merchants who were turned out of their homes by the guard. And many of the rest faced worse. Indentured servitude if they are caught holding money back or simply can't afford to pay their taxes and... Taxes. Taxes in the first place. <gasps> I can do this, I promise. I inhaled deeply in shock. But that's practically slavery! Chateau slavery is outlawed in all the realms. This does not stop some leaders and groups from skirting the law with practices like press ganging and indentured servitude. Do we want to talk about the U.S. prison system? Because... <clears throat> <clears throat> That's another video, but glad to know the game devs are informed people. Indeed, and conditions worsen every day in Nottingham's poor districts, with hardly anyone hiring labor anymore. That's where we come in. How are you acting on all of that from here? I won't lie, it's rough for us. Jeffrey has the soldiers, the weapons, the money, and the power. But we have one thing he'll never be able to take from us. Is it their hearts? Is it their friendship? Is it their spirit? A ridiculous amount of optimism? The power of public opinion! <laughs> he looks so confident too! Oh my god, I love this. He paused for effect and noticed the skepticism written across my face. Putting on a particularly charming smile, he leaned in like a bard telling a children's tale. What do the people long for most when times are rough? Proper food and shelter? Of course, but they need more than that. They need a hero to give them hope. A powerful man who is on their side. They say heroes come from the light, right? But what happens when those in light are venal and wicked? That's when your hero has to come from the shadows. An outlaw hero. What do you do? Sneak into Nottingham and give inspiring speeches? He laughed. We protect them from the sheriff's goons. We rescue those who have been indentured. And best of all, we steal from the rich and give to the poor. Your philanthropic bandits. Exactly! And let me tell you, the sheriff is infuriated by us. More folk are joining our cause every day, and hopefully we'll soon have enough for a real rebellion. I love it. I love it. The Robin Hood story is always relevant, and we love that. I had to admit, his enthusiasm and strength of will were infectious, even if I wasn't entirely sure whether he was a genius or a madman. Possibly both. But that aside, Lady Marion, we have a spy in the Sheriff's Manor, and when she told us about you, we knew we had to rescue you from a future with that man. 
And now that I've met you, well, you are brave, intelligent, and beautiful. He doesn't deserve a woman like you. So, what would you bid me do now that I'm your prisoner instead? I may have said that more pointedly than necessary, but the way they'd rescued me still stung. Now that you've heard the truth about Lord Jeffrey, you're free to leave at any time. We'll help you return to your father if you'd like. I assume he'll agree to break your engagement to a man who cannot even protect his own roads from bandits. Hmm. You're probably right. You may even keep your engagement. Not that I recommend it. Of course, there's a price to be paid if that's your choice. We'll have to ransom you to him dearly. He gave me a challenging look, one that I returned with equal heat. Let me think on it. Very well. He rose and stretched. You may stay with us in this cabin as long as you wish. Dinner will be served shortly, and I believe the lads have a small welcome celebration planned for you. Indeed. Then let's see what the enter entertainment the bandits of Sherwood can provide. I love- I just- ah! Oh, I'm just- I'm so into it, guys. I'm so into it. I took Robin's proffered arm, and he escorted me back to the center of the camp for a rustic but well-prepared meal. He introduced me to the group, who applauded me before going back to their business. Robin was a perfectly charming conversation partner, and I was feeling quite relaxed by the time the sun was dipping below the horizon and the rebels began pulling out instruments and clearing space in the middle of camp. A young man trotted over to Robin and whispered something in his ear. He nodded and placed a hand on my shoulder. I'll be back soon, milady. <laughs> I will never stop making that joke, I am so sorry. I was left alone as the sun set, sitting on the edge of the growing festivities. The rebels had been directing curious gazes at me for some time, but were keeping a respectful distance. I suppose that even these outlaws respected the barriers between commoners and nobility, so I scanned the crowd for familiar faces. Several men were building up a bonfire in the fire pit, and those who had brought instruments were tuning up. I spotted John amongst them, sitting with an unusual drum between his legs. It took a bit longer to find Will, I like this music, who was leaning against a tree on the edge of the clearing, arms and legs crossed. Oh! Aha! Okay, so here, I believe, is where our, our choice of man happens. I'm gonna join John amongst the musicians. To the surprise of nobody. Let's go. I approached the musicians, and John greeted me with a wide smile. Hey. It was a wonderful smile, warm and welcoming. He patted the stone bench next to him, and I sat. I nearly gathered my skirts around me out of habit when I realized I was wearing trousers. Rather handy, these things. It is good to take some time for merriment, no? I had had precious little of that since I took over my father's holding, so I nodded in hearty agreement. The fiddlers began a reel, so John turned to his drum, and I watched in fascination as he coaxed a variety of sounds out of it, depending on how he slapped the skin with his hand. I had never seen a drum besides our traditional baudron, which was hit with a stick. It's more Celtic shit! A baudron is an Irish drum. I'll stick a picture of it in here. Or editing Martha will stick a picture in here. I love it. And I love that we are getting some cultural context. It is so good. Oh! It's called the djembe! Okay. Where is that from? I learned about that in ethnomusicology back in school. I think it's... Yeah, okay. It's West Africa. But what country specifically? because Africa is not a monolith. I'm originally from West Africa. From the Bambara people in Mali. And I'll stick a picture of the djembe here too. So, yeah. Cool. We, yes! Yes! Oh, love cultural context! I am into it. And I'm wondering, I, I still want a map. I still want a map. I want to know how, because it says these countries are like, there's a land bridge connecting these countries, but I'm, I'm curious. 
He explained to me as he played a steady rhythm. People who can talk and play drums or sing and play drums at the same time? Wizards. I craziness. I learned how to play as a boy and had a Junjati trader bring it to me in Nottingham. It's good to have something to remind me of home. It is. I like it. I wondered how John had come to Avalon, but this noisy party wasn't a good time to ask. Instead, I sat back and enjoyed the music. Soon, the group was playing a popular ballad that I knew, and I began to sing along under my breath. Don't be shy, sing it out! Oh, you don't want to hear me? I have a terrible singing voice. Nonsense. Everyone should sing. Singing helps prevent the onset of dementia and Alzheimer's. So, sing something daily, even if you suck. Just sing. It's fun. Alright, you asked for it. I sang a bit louder, self-consciously. I'd always been told that although I can sing on key, my voice is too shrill and harsh. After the song, John beamed over at me. His handsome face, illuminated by the bonfire, was like a cool drink of water. You have a wonderful voice. Don't lie, I know it's not very good. He looked at me seriously, and I realized that this man didn't have an insincere bone in his body. And I like it. Your voice is strong and clear, like a hawk. That is such a good compliment! John got game! So, I'm a hawk, am I? I suppose I can be a bit carnivorous. I deflected the compliment out of embarrassment, but John gave me a mischievous smile. I don't mind that either! <laughs> don't be trash, my friend! Don't be trash! Oh my god, I can't, I can't help it. I can't help it. John is definitely my type, like, personality-wise. Just, just kill me with kindness. I love it. Ugh. Mmm, flirtatious and nice. <sighs> Swooning. I felt a blush creep into my cheeks. I should really think before I open my mouth. <laughs> Same. But John merely turned back to his drum for the next song. Woohoohoo! Is it time for the fan? It's time. We gotta, we gotta bring back the fan. <laughs> okay. Oof. Robin eventually returned to the party and whisked me away for a dance or two, but I always found myself returning to John's side. His gentle company made me feel safe and comfortable. Eventually, the fire banked down and the rebels returned to their cabins and longhouses. John bade me wait a moment turned with two small lanterns that shone with an unearthly blue glow. Are those Will-o'-the-Wisps? I gazed at the lanterns in wonder. Will-o'-the-Wisps were malevolent, malevolent half-fey spirits that were far more likely to lead humans astray than help them. John shrugged his large shoulders. You'll have to ask Tuck how he tamed them. They're very useful when your home is made of living wood. John showed me back to my cabin and placed a comforting hand on my shoulder. My cabin is right over there if you need anything at all. I'll leave my lantern outside so you can find it. I mean, why not just, why not invite him in at this point? Jeez. Thank you. You've been so kind, and I might be washed up dead right now if it weren't for you. It's not worth mentioning, but I'm glad I could help. Have a good sleep, lady. To John. The soft smile he gave me before he turned away stuck in my mind for some time. How dreamy. There's the mushroom stools! There they are! Interesting. Inside my cabin, I plopped the lantern down on the wood burl table and collapsed onto the bed. There were night clothes in my size sitting on the end of the bed. That must have been Nell, uh, what Nell was doing during the party. I wondered what the expected exchange was for favors done by a person who wasn't one's vassal. I'd never faced such a transaction before, work done neither out of obligation nor for currency. That question would have to wait for morning. I shrugged out of my day clothes and into the night ones, then buried myself beneath the blankets. I stared at the blue light across the way. How exactly do I douse a magic lamp? I spoke to myself, but the floating orbs blinked softly, then went out. Well, 
That was that, then. Sleep claimed me in an instant. I was awakened by bird song and mottled light beaming through my window. It took me a few moments to get oriented as my mind ran over where I was and how I'd come to be here. Right then, it was time to get to it. What exactly was I going to do now? I was in a good position to negotiate for my own freedom with my father. If Robin of Loxley was as good on his word as I suspected he was, I'd have assistance and shelter while I extricated myself from my engagement. On the other hand, who was to say that my father wouldn't simply begin looking for another nobleman upon whom to pawn me off? And was becoming a good lady of a hold truly what I wanted out of life? Just months ago, it was the only future I could have seen. But today, I was starting to get an idea. A crazy, dangerous idea that would turn my entire life upside down. It felt like a new door was opening to me. If only I were brave and reckless enough to walk through it. I'd always thought of myself as an eminently sensible person. Was it time to throw away that identity? We're gonna join the Bandit Rebellion because of course we are. What fool do you take me for? We are gonna offer to join the Bandit Rebellion. True, Robin and his friends might have been a bit barmy, but I had my own goals in mind. If this rebellion succeeded, I'd have personally assisted Nottingham's new leaders. That was an excellent position to be in. Besides, I didn't have to stick around if things looked like they were going south, and in the meantime, I had a place from which I could figure out what I wanted from my future, safe from my father's intervention. Let's go! Who is this? Who is- oh, I've always been a sucker for redheads. Is that Tuck? I wanted a crazy old man, but I was gifted with a sexy ginger. God damn it. Mind made up, I strode confidently out of my cabin and spotted Robin and his lieutenants sitting around a stone table some distance away. God, they're all attractive. I hate them. They looked up at me as I approached, but I took my time taking a seat and smiling pleasantly at them. I'd learned from bitter experience that the first step to be taken seriously was to act as though my inclusion was a matter of course. Robin and John looked at me with cheerful expectation. Will appeared uninterested, idly carving a block of wood with a small sharp knife, but the final face at the table was the one that drew my attention. This new man looked more like a bandit than anyone I'd met the day before. His rusty red hair was artfully disheveled, as was his dark-hued outfit. He'd had several days' beard growth and several obvious scars on his face. Still, there was a rugged handsomeness about him that drew my eye. He sat down the wine goblet that he'd been idly swirling and put out his hand. Leighton Tuck. I asked for an old man and I got a sexy ginger. <laughs> I'm doomed he said simply, taking my hand and shaking it firmly instead of kissing it. I raised my eyebrows and heard Robin chuckle. See, I like a firm handshake. I'm into it. As well-mannered as always. Pray forgive him, milady. He doesn't have the proper respect for any of his betters. If I ever meet my betters, Luxley, I'll be sure to summon some respect. The longer utterance betrayed a Stenish accent. Interesting. It wasn't often that somebody made it to the side of the wall. Robin's mysterious druid was becoming more and more of a puzzle. Stenish, a region in the north of Avalon, a continent with a clan-based society. Okay, so he's the Celt. He's the Celtic. The, the actual, like, Irish guy. Or is he Scottish? Because Scotland's to the north of England. Because we have England... I'm gonna do it from your point of view. We have England... We have Ireland, Northern Ireland, and then Scotland is, like, above it. So I'm wondering if he's supposed to be Scottish or Northern Irish. Who knows? Um, separated from Avalon proper by a gigantic wall of magical plants, which was erected by King Arthur after Stenland refused to join the pact. The magical old ways are still practiced there. I like him. I like his, his, his smirk. 
Yes, yes, anyhow, Lady Marion! You look like you have something to say. Yes, I've decided what I want to do next. I took a breath. I'd like to join your rebellion. Oh? God, why is Tuck so fine? I hate it! A hush fell around the table. Robin looked cautiously pleased, and Leighton appeared thoughtful. Or scheming. It was difficult to tell. John seemed concerned, while Will looked almost angry. After a beat, Robin broke the silence. Well, now this is unexpected news, but welcome news all the same. We'll be sure to take very good care of you, Lady Marion. Wait, are you too serious? What can she possibly contribute? She's a lady. She doesn't have a trade. She doesn't have... I cut him off with a cross look. Asshole. This was the moment I'd been waiting for. I may have failed to show my worth on the road yesterday, but now things were under my control. I'd be happy to show you what I can do. Would someone kindly fetch me a sword? Here we go. Demo end! Only the beginning. Ugh. While the Nottingham demo contains the entire Nottingham common route, the Sherwood demo cuts off early because the next segment requires combat sprites. We hope to update the demo with the full Sherwood common route later in development. Okay. Dang. Becky Cunningham. I like you. I like your writing. This is cool. I'm gonna let the title sc or credit screen go. Um, I like this. I am very excited to see the full Sherwood common route and then go into the full game. So, of course I am going to be playing the Nottingham demo next, but I had to finish the Sherwood version first. So, Next week, I will be back with the Nottingham version in a different outfit. But for now, I would like to give a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon for making videos like this possible. I love y'all. Y'all are the shit. And if you would like to join their number, hit the description box below because the link to my Patreon page is there. Also in the description box is my Discord server for all of my lovely little marshmallows that would like to join me in screaming about, uh, you know, games and anime and K-pop and everything else that we want to scream about. So if you want to join us there, again, hit the description box. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you next week for the beginning of the Nottingham route. Bye.